Hello drummers and other creatures. We're going to go for it today and look at some hi-hat barks. That means the funny sound that Bernard Purdy made in Rocksteady by Aretha Franklin. That was one of the, the more famous examples of the thing. And I don't know, he's probably claiming to be the progenitor of such things. And maybe he is. He is the progenitor of much that's cool. Um, another famous example of these hi-hat barks would be Brad Wilt's use in Bullet in the Head, playing a beautiful and memorable legendary fill, if I dare say, uh, using hi-hat barks. So what the hell am I talking about? Here's some hi-hat barks. Did that sound like barking? I don't know. Maybe there's another word for them as well that sounds more appropriate. But that's this little sound where we get a quite quick opening of the hi-hat. Push! Accompanied by a bass drum. Um, and we're going to look at how that works. You may or may not have noticed that I did two types of moves, one with the right hand, one with the left. And both of them are pretty useful. Um, I tend to use the left-handed option more, but um, I don't know, I don't think about it that much when I'm playing. Um, what we want to do is, you know, acquire our vocabulary and then just sort of let it happen when we're jamming or, or playing songs and so on. Not to think about it too much once we've done uh, all the practice it requires to kind of internalize a pattern. So, hi-hat barks, what are we gonna do? Um, to start with, before we even think about how we place these, how we fit these in to a groove, let's just look at what the movements are between uh, right foot, right hand, left hand, you know, the limbs, the bass drum, right foot. Again, I know if I'm saying right foot, you're using your left foot or whatever, that's fine. I'll leave it to you to translate. I'm a right-handed drummer and a right-handed kit, and I'm going to be using my right foot for the bass, left foot for the hi-hat, Right hand on the hi-hat, left hand on the hi-hat. I'm gonna alternate those two. So, starting off with the right hand on the hi-hat, what am I doing? First thing, I'm playing a stroke, uh, opening with my foot and striking the cymbal with my hand at the same time, again, right hand. And I'm doing it quite quickly. I might be using a heel down or heel up with my foot, I don't know, I think that heel up gives me a slightly tighter sound, to be honest. Um, so again, you can try both of those. I'm not opening the cymbals very much. Uh, you can get away with like a really teeny-weeny uh, shift in weight almost and get a kind of sound out of it. Where it's just that very, very toppy sound or you can release a little bit more. Get a bigger opening gives you a slightly longer sound, maybe a, a bit more body to the sound as well. Okay, um, you can experiment with that. Sit and do this first. Don't rush into trying to do the groove thing yet, right? If you've never done this before, if you've done it before, well, you don't need to be watching this video, do you really? Okay. That's what you're doing. Open and close the hi-hat. Now, have you used your foot much? Your left foot, your hi-hat foot, whichever foot it might be, your middle foot, I don't know. It might take you some time to get used to doing this. Maybe you need to do a little bit of work with your left foot, I don't know. If you've used it, if you've not used it before, it might take you a bit of time getting that speed of motion, the only way you're going to find out is by trying it. And if it doesn't work at first, sit down and maybe just practice doing that on its own for a little while. Um, a few weeks maybe, I don't know. How long does it take to learn these things? Now, done it with the right hand, let's do it with the left hand. Since we're isolating it already. Oh, this is going to be a nightmare to edit.
okay? Now, once I'm comfortable, I've got my open sounds, maybe I've experimented a little bit with getting a slightly more open and slightly less open option. If it's too less, you're not gonna get the, the open of the hi-hat. It's just gonna sound like an accented hi-hat sound, which again, might be fine for certain things, but that's not the particular thing I'm looking at right now. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we're gonna add the bass drum. Right hand and right foot together, they want to go together, so maybe this will work reasonably easily. But you've also got the left foot in the game here, and what's happening is I'm opening and playing the bass drum at the same time. So my left foot is going up, my right foot is going down. All right? That's what the feet are doing on their own. Uh huh. Ooh. How how does your weight feel on the seat when you're doing that? Sometimes it might make you a bit wobbly. When I bring the bass drum in, I feel like playing heel up a lot more. It just works for me. I feel like I can get the speed of the fast hi-hat move that will then make the stick stroke sound really good. You might feel better doing heel down. You've got to investigate these things. And the fact that something feels better when you start doing it doesn't necessarily mean that that's the absolute way you need to do it. Maybe you're more capable with a heel down, but you realize you can get a little bit more tightness and control out of it if you learn to do it heel up. Okay, you can work on that too. Put my right hand back into the, the picture, and this time we've got the open hi-hat, we've got the hand, we've got the bass drum and you want to hear everything happening at once. Pew, 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 piss up, maybe, piss off. Good. Now, when we do it with the left hand, I've got right foot, left hand, my left foot in the mix, and you never know if the coordination is going to be straightforward there because the right foot and the left hand don't really want to work together unless you've um, done a load of coordination exercises and uh, learned how to do it. And I, I find quite honestly, if I'm um, not really in the best of form, uh, sometimes when I try and play a left hand stroke with a right foot or um, I don't know, left foot with the right hand, it can sound a bit messy, even though I feel like I've done quite a lot of work on it. Uh, one good thing you can do to practice that coordination is to do right hand, left foot, left hand, right foot, like this. You can do it also without the drums, just patting your feet on the floor and patting your hands on your thighs. Right hand, left foot, left hand, right foot, like that, single strokes in a crisscross alternating pattern. Anyway. If you're good with that, you should be able to then do bass drum and left hand on the hi-hat. So there you go, that's the, the first thing you need to look at to get those beautiful hi-hat barks. The next challenge is how do we incorporate that into a groove? And, uh, oh, ugh, noise outside, sorry. Okay, how do we incorporate that into a groove? Um, and we're going to sort of think ahead a little bit. I'm going to be playing it on the E's and R's, and um, we're going to look at today just um, incorporating this into like an eighth note hi-hat pattern. You can do it also with sixteenths, but you know, I'm not going to deal with that right now. We'll just incorporate it into eighth notes, and what that means is that I'm going to sort of jump in with a syncopated sixteenth, uh, interrupting or disrupting my hi-hat pattern. So maybe starting off with, let's just think of a groove where we're counting to two rather than to four, just a two beat groove. So I'm gonna go one and two and, better not to talk and drum at the same time. One and two and. And I'm going to not go in sort of mathematical order with this. 
Um, but maybe uh, let's start off with, with one of the options that's a little bit more straightforward, if you like, which would be uh, one and a, uh, right? So I'm gonna go. I missed the bass there. So what that means I'm doing is I'm doubling up there, I'm playing an extra 16th on the art of one. Immediately after that comes the two, but I'm not gonna play the hi-hat on the two, I'm gonna just leave that to the snare. Foot closing the hi-hat gives me some hi-hat on the two already and if I try and play the two with my hand as well it kind of clutters things up a little bit so it might not sound as good. And um, I can't, I don't know if it makes a huge difference actually at that tempo but um, as soon as you speed it up you'll start to notice, and again, it might create a little bit of tension you don't need, and you know, it doesn't sound that different. So if I do it a little bit faster. Okay, now, as I said, focus on it being like one and a two, and one and a two, and to try and get the hang of it. Next, we can put it on the 2E, coming right after the snare. So we'd have, okay. Oh, that was the one hand again. Okay, 2E. Now, I'm gonna play the uh, hi-hat on the two with the snare and then the E, but then I'm gonna miss the and on the hi-hat. So I'm gonna play one and two E and. One and two E and. So I don't really need to play that and again, it's more relaxed if I don't. Now we can do the one E and, oh no, the one a uh, and the two e and, right? So one and a uh, two e, one and a uh, two e. So we've got the, the two sixteenths syncopated one after the other. Ah, if I could remember how to, what I'm doing. Let's try that again. Let's put that into a sort of more of a four, four context. One, two, three, four. Something like that anyway. Um, okay, so you can do the one E, you can do, no, we could do the one, oh, see, this is the problem with these videos is, you can't remember which of these 16th note subdivisions you're working on. And uh, oh, who cares anyway? Right, so we've got the one R and the two E, right? Now, uh, the next one we could do is the one E, which is the one I keep trying to talk about, which comes immediately after the one, obviously. And that means playing two bass drums in a row. So it'd be like this, one E. And again, I can miss out the and of the one.
What's my last option here? One E we've done, one R, two E, the two R. Uh, the two R is a good one as well. Maybe I should have done that before, but uh, again, we've got one and two and R, right? And again, I'm gonna miss playing the hi-hat on the one that comes back from there. So I'm gonna play one and two and R, and two and R, okay, like this. Again, we can put that into a normal context of a bar of four. So that makes sense so far. Now, now once you've got the hang of each one of those, you can try and improvise slowly, uh, just opening them on any of the E's and R's, the one E, the one R, the two E, or the two R. And again, this is in the context of a groove at the moment, um, and just really relax it, and maybe you can improvise through it. You might have to take some time to work on each one of those options, and really get comfortable with it. Remember, I'm trying to cram quite a lot of information into, I don't know, a shortish video at least. I don't know how long this is gonna be, but hopefully not too long, and you might just want to settle on, I'm going to work, learn the one E this week and be happy with that and get that sounding really good. There's no rush to put everything together in the same way that I'm doing it um, in this video. Okay, so let's have a go. Um, improvising a little bit, I'm going to stay at a slow tempo. I don't know how that fill helps us. <laughs> it's impulses, drummer's impulses, we can't help ourselves. Okay, so there you have the right-handed hi-hat bark. Um, learn how to do it. It gives you a lot of options for varying your groove and um, you know, not getting too much in the way of things. So it's a, it's a good way to sort of follow either uh, stabs in a song or to just like embellish what you're doing without having to like try and show off with the whole drum set all the time. Um, so well, that's it really, just go and work on it. And uh, I'm gonna make another video where I explain how to do the left-handed hi-hat barks, how about that? And uh, if you get used to both of them uh, and learn how to use them spontaneously, it's a beautiful thing that you can do. Okay, let's uh, play a little bit at a slightly faster tempo. So there you have it, the right-handed hi-hat barks. I hope that gives you something to think about, gives you some inspiration for something to work on. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please let me know in the comments and bear in mind that I'm available to teach directly on Skype or Zoom or whatever platform you like, or I'm even available in real life in Northwest London to help you with your drumming. And I've helped quite a lot of people. So, uh, you know, get in touch if you feel that somebody uh, needs to, or if you feel that you need somebody rather to, to give you a bit of advice and help you progress with your drumming. There's lots of different ways to do it actually. So um, feel free to get in touch. Leave me a comment, as I said, whether you like this video, whether you didn't, if you've got any follow-up questions and so on and so forth. And uh, I look forward to seeing you in the next video. But meanwhile, I think you should bugger off and play.